All right. Uh, welcome to Infinite Ages video. Um, this one is about creating a character for Infinite Ages, and I go over a little bit of the lore and a little bit of uh, this and that. So this should give you a pretty good intro to the game and uh, kind of how to build a character. Um, you can also follow along and just build a character and check out the game. Um, if you or one of your friends owns the book, uh, thank you so much for supporting us and uh, hope hopefully uh, you join the discord and check us out in the little thing below and i'll see you again at the end of the video or end of the video i don't know how this thing works the timeline's like this and then you just you're kind of whatever all right i'll see you guys in a little bit and of course i already own the book so i'll go over to the downloads hit the downloads button download the book cool 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 so pull open the book here there we go. There's our book. So, uh, if you are new to the channel or haven't seen any of this stuff, um, a few of our, like, me and uh, Jeff and a few other of my friends and family have helped put together this um, this book called Infinite Ages. It's a, not, a book is a bad way to put it. It's a game. Uh, it's called Infinite Ages Genesis. It's a tabletop role-playing game. And um, for the most part, I would say this this is supposed to be a, an, an all-encompassing narrative storytelling like adventure system um, for you and your friends to like play through. And uh, the, the reasoning for it is, is basically just I want people to be able to share stories with each other and, um, you know, have, have like, have that... Um, have that experience to tell stories with your friends that are made up and, you know, play characters that you never uh, would and all that good stuff. So, um, without further ado, we're going to get into kind of the the main, the main, like, stuff for the game so that we can build a character together. So, again, my name's Donovan. I'm the, like, lead creator of the entire book. And, um, yeah, let's go through this here together this is just the prelude not too, nothing too important here uh table of contents um so just to familiarize yourself with this as a player uh you're probably only going to need pages 10 through um pages 10 through like 178 and then obviously you might touch on like 181 183 and you're gonna be skipping a lot of stuff too so we'll we'll kind of do this all together okay so for our first thing, we're going to go to building a character. And this is a step-by-step, -step, nine step uh, like setup to building a character. And you'll see this kind of a lot through the book where there's just a step-by-step -step on how to do things or how to run things. Um, I find it a lot easier when you go one after another to put stuff together. So here we have, uh, we're going to choose our race. This will determine your character's movement speed, which uh, I also have the character sheet up here so we can kind of pick those things out. So race, and I already know what we're going to test. We're going to do, um, actually just do human. And uh, this is going to determine our movement speed, our attribute bonus, vision type, resistance, and so on. So we'll go on down and um, check that out. Just give me one second here. Here's races, there's android, here's human. So as we're looking at the uh, human race here, we've got a little bit of lore and description as to you know what's been going on with humanity and kind of the lore behind where the book setting is currently. Um, and this is where you're gonna get a lot of your ideas. So the Infinite Ages world is built around um, this idea that we left our we left Earth with a group of other alien races that were in our solar system, and we've created this USSI, which is United Star Systems of Interest. Now, the USSI is populated with tons of planets and um, and like sectors essentially. Um, within this is you know planets that might be uh, medieval, some that might be colonial, uh, and so on and so forth, because there was a, kind of like a grand split, basically. People like wanted to get away from technology, so they went and started new lives on new planets without tech super, like, super high-end uh, technology, and some of them uh, developed uh, superpowers and and uh, you know joined into more traditional um, type of professions and trainings and things like that. 
so that's kind of where the book uh, will start you off as a lore perspective. So you could have any game from high high fantasy to something very um, like sci-fi space exploration um, kind of like game. Um, I've, there's also some like colonial time period. So the main four time periods that we chose were uh, there's a space age, there's a modern age, uh, colonial age, and medieval age. And you can kind of bounce between those things with your party and your group and talk about where you guys want to play in and what you guys want to do and how you want to run it. Um, but yeah, so so far we're, 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 we've got our attribute thing, so we can add one point to two different ability scores of your choice. So um, for this character, I want, um, I want them to have an extra, a little bit of extra intelligence, so they're going to get a one for intelligence and a one for charisma. Now, in, in Infinite Ages, there's no, like, rolling, really, for character creation, aside from what you might roll for your skills, or your superpower, or the profession, or your training. You can roll for all of those things. Um, for the most part, though, we keep things, I keep things very straightforward and easy, so all of your bonuses are just generally zero, unless you have something that's going to modify them. And, of course, your attributes modify your skills, which are down here. And uh, you know you can you could match up the emblem to the skill, and that's your attribute that modifies that skill. So uh, our movement speed is going to be 30, which uh, in in infinite ages that's uh, five feet per square. So you can move six squares a turn. Uh, turns are based in three seconds. So then we have vision. Vision types normal. Which I can scroll down here. We could put in vision type normal. Cool. Uh, or 2020 vision, yeah. Uh, and for his age, we're going to do anywhere between... So, 200 to 300. This is like a max age. The human race, again, with the lore stuff, there's been a lot of um, like a genetic manipulation to humans over time uh, that has been passed down through lineage. So, we're going to be... You know, we're only going to be... We're going to be young. We're going to be 25. We're going to be 25. Uh... Do human, human resistances. Humans have adapted to exist in empty space, unprotected for three rounds. So here we can put our resistance. We put a resistance, you know, space. So we have resistance in space. Um, and then we get to... So this is where I said the rolling can come in. We can roll 1d4 to pick our skill, or we can just straight up pick a skill. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pick... Um, for this, we're going to pick... Mechanics, for whatever reason. So, <laughs> we'll pick mechanics here. And, of course, if you're making a character, you might, um, you know, you might select a character or build a character based on many different uh, reasons. So, if you are, you want to be the medic or you want to be the scientist or you want to be the tech guy or the mechanic, you have these choices and you can start kind of going through them. This does not determine everything as this game is based on accruing additional skill levels and things like that. Um, cool. So, we're going to bounce on down now to professions. Uh, professions in the game are going to give you quite a bit. We'll get into that a little bit more, but we can just read this little thing here. While professions doesn't classify or become what your character is, it's an important step to understanding what they are part of. Uh, below you'll find it, yeah, so you can feel free to kind of like roll here is all I'm saying. And then you'll, you know, your professions apply you with a brief description of what they're expected to be able to do, um, which in some, like, like I said, because it does go over multiple ages. In some of these ages, you'll have um, you might if you're a bounty hunter in medieval times versus a bounty hunter in the future, your job description may change mildly, but it's essentially the same category. Same with like a mechanic. Like a mechanic could uh, just be a blacksmith or just be um, you know something along those lines where it's like oh yeah I shoe horses and I do this and that's being a mechanic in you know medieval times or I work on wagon wheels or you know whatever right um, or water wheels rather is what I meant to say but cool so we'll go ahead let's just choose one at random here uh, I'm gonna go with eight so uh, scrapyard captain okay let's scroll on down uh, scrapper so here we are. Um, this is going to give you kind of like a big uh, opening. So a, a scrapper, you would imagine in medieval times or in colonial times, would be somebody that is rummaging through like factory business. If you're in colonial times, right, you'd be 
run th- rummage through factories or uh, sift through junk. Um, it's really just somebody that uh, works on kind of more like a Tinker-esque vibe where they're using trash and random heaps of stuff to build stuff. Uh, it's like the, rap, like the rough estimate of like what a scrapper is going to be. Um, the start, so this the profession is going to give us our starting credits, which we can go ahead and pop in on the main character sheet here, 8,000. I'll put in a little comma there. Oh, I can't put it in a comma. It does it by itself. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, passive skill uh, you can scrap items without the necessary equipment and you have a chance to find a treasure and scrap roll 1d20 on a 19 or 20 you find something rare which is um, literally just a little bit of flavor text and then you always start your profession at level 1 so we also know the bar- ballpark cost of any salvage uh, you find and if you own the book you can just control C uh, I'm going to pop that because uh, I don't have a note, separate notes page right now. I'm just going to pop that in my inventory so I don't forget it. And I'm going to pop this in there as well just so I don't forget it. Uh, okay, cool. So we got that stuff down. Next, we're going to scroll on down. We got the profession in there. We're going to pick a training. So trainings in this game are essentially like, you know, like your maybe your hobby. Maybe it's something you went to school for. Um, there's a number of reasons why you might actually get into these things. So under the books, like ways, it's like, oh, this is aviator school. This is cultural studies. This is interpersonal studies. But you don't necessarily have to go to a cultural school to understand um, how to ve- how to like operate a vehicle, right? That's what operator is going to be, or astro navigation. That's just like a a general major, a general idea. Your backstory and things like that is where you will get your training. Or like where you'd get that training, so you can kind of, you know, tweak the major, tweak the name of these things, but use the base stats and be okay. And what your training is going to offer is your armor rating, which is how hard it is to hit you, like how difficult it is to actually get a hit onto you. Um, in the game, we use a d20 system, so you'll roll a d20, add your respective modifier or bonuses to uh, attack somebody, and if it is above above their armor rating then you um then you would in fact uh like be able to strike them and deal damage so we're gonna go with um military trained here we're gonna do armor rating uh is our dex plus 12 which if you guys remember from earlier i did intelligence and charisma so that's not going to help us too much uh but we have 12 armor rating naturally um our initiative is two plus our dex which is zero so just two uh, and our hit points are going to be 8. And every every uh, one of these is going to have the same hit points. Uh, hit points in the game are all uh, essentially based on the same thing. So if you have 8 hit points, you're going to add your constitution per level. Um, if you get more constitution, that does count back as your uh, for your levels. Cool. So now we can go into kind of building a persona. Uh, this is probably like the more difficult part is where you actually put together your backstory and things like that. Uh, persona step by step. So first thing we're going to do is brainstorm an idea. Uh, so take some time to think about the type of character you want to create. Consider their personality, goals, traits, contacts, motivations for becoming an adventurer and or and any other defining characteristics that will make them unique. Um, what I want to say is that this guy and we're going to be. Let's go, first we would talk about, uh, like, kind of like, well, okay, do I want them to be, you know, tall, do I want, do I want them to be short, do I want them to have a rough fam, rough childhood, a great childhood, kind of putting into perspective those things, you're also thinking about, like, well, maybe I want, uh, you know, I want a family, but I don't want to be near them, so this happened, and we've been split, and I don't know where they are. I'm an orphan, and I have to find my family, and that's kind of like the reason why he goes adventuring, right? Totally could be our brainstorm. He could be just an adventurer. But if you're having a tough time coming up with these uh, motives and, like, the plan and the unexpected things and the brains, you're trying to, like, brainstorm some ideas, 
I did leave some examples down here below. There are four different examples for each time period, essentially. Uh, so this is like a knight with a heart of gold who was wrongfully accused of a crime and seeks redemption by an on uh, by going on a quest to clear his name and restore his uh, honor. So that could be his main drive for adventuring, right? Brainstorming is not necessarily that, because then you also have like uh, a young woman for, from a wealthy family who defies uh, society norms to pro to become a pirate and seek adventure on the high seas. So it can be something like a noble quest, or it could be just, I want adventure because my life's so bland. Um, you can kind of go multiple ways with that. Uh, I'm not going to get too too deep into this stuff. I just want to kind of brief brief over it. Uh, I will say, the I've run a lot of Infinite Ages games now that I've got the book completed and things like that. So I will say motivations, plans, unexpected things, all of these things will add so much depth to your character. Uh, not only when you're playing them, but also for your GM. So if you hand your GM your persona sheet, which I recommend doing on a notebook because it's that's my preferred method. If you do it through your know, notes on your phone or you want to create a Google Doc and have it printed because you have bad handwriting, whatever the, the, the like optional like medium that you want to go through uh, you use to do this, um, you're going to you're going to really appreciate it later as the campaign continues. And you definitely don't have to do this on day one. However, if you finish the step, so if you finish all nine steps here, uh, you may choose one skill to increase to level one based on your persona. So that's kind of a cool thing. And since we are uh, we are military trained, we're going to go ahead and put that stuff in as well. I forgot to do that really quick. So military trained, we'll do plus one for our constitution. So that's good. Then that'll give us nine max hit points because our hit points go up. So sorry about that. And then uh, we're going to choose scout. So our perception goes up by one. And perceive is what we have it aimed in the book. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get too much more into the persona. That's basically what you need to know about it, is that it will make your character feel more real, it'll give them the layers, it'll give them more depth, uh, reasoning for their decision making, and that really will help you whenever you start getting in those lived-in moments, as I like to like think about them, is like, how much time has this character actually been played? So, you never really know how a character is going to come out until you start playing it. And if you do these steps beforehand, you'll have such a better understanding of what your character is doing and why. Um, cool. So now we're just going to brief over the leveling up system. I'm not going to bother you guys with this uh, here, but the leveling system uh, can affect all of these columns here. So we have obviously your level, skill levels required, power points, hit points, attributes, training, profession, and actions. So over time, your character will accrue skill levels, and that's basically what we've done to replace experience. So there's no more experience in the game. You don't gain experience for killing a monster necessarily, but you will gain experience for making rolls. Um, so skill levels, you accrue those by rolling for skills. Uh, we have like 24 skills. They all go up to level 5, um, which I'll get into more detail on that later. Uh, based on your level, you'll get two points every level um, to increase your power or whatever superpower you might be using. If you aren't using a superpower uh, in some campaigns, some campaigns won't want it, then you, uh, you might have something else here or you might just ignore it. Uh, every four levels, you'll get a hit point increase, and every two levels, you get a plus one to any attribute that you wish. Uh, also, every, I think it's seven, yeah, seven levels for training. So you'll get an extra training, one additional training that you get to pick from. Um, this only increases the skill level and an attribute point, but it's kind of nice, as you can tell. You gain a skill level and an attribute point. Uh, then you also get to level up your profession as you uh, develop through the levels. This is a 30 level uh, leveling system. Um, and then lastly, You'll, uh, every 10 levels you can gain an additional action. Uh, this is predetermined, so you will get, at level 10, you get two actions around. Um, then this 1R here is your reactions. So then at level 20, you get three actions around. And then you also get, uh, at level 30, you get three actions and two reactions around. Um, and we can get into kind of more detail on that in a different video where I go over combat and things like that. Uh, you'll actually understand a little bit further as to why actions are important and action economy and things like that. 
So now we're on to superpowers. We are just going to go with the very first superpower here for our character. And we'll go ahead and say that we are uh, going to start at level uh, level 1. So we're level 1. Let's put a 1 here. And our profession that we chose was going to be Scrapper. And our training that we have is um, Scout. Uh, it's a military training, but we're Scout Major. Which, of course, you could change that to anything. You could change it to Lookout, or you could change it to whatever. Um, right? If you're playing a medieval game, maybe you want it to be Lookout, cause it's like, or Night Watch, or something along those lines. Um, so anyways, let's get into the superpower a little bit here. So we'll scroll on down. Um, your second sheet is going to be for your, like your height, your weight, your age, um, you know, some personal characteristics, and then your superpower. So for superpower, we're doing mind, uh, manipulation, cool, mind manipulation, cool. Um, so this is the mind manipulation skill tree. Essentially, uh, we've got a point by system, and like I said, every two levels you're gaining points. So we only have a total of two power points right now. Um, with those two power points, we can purchase uh, two level one. So level two power points, this is the cost. Level ones are going to cost you one point. Level two is two points. Level three is three points, so on and so forth. Four points, five points. Um, to unlock these uh, skills, you have to at least have a connecting rocket ship, essentially. So if you have influence, you can get convulse, or you can get text-to-speech. If you have convulse, you can get pacify or telepathy, but you can't get migraine. If you have text-to-speech, you can't get telepathy. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, as long as you can actually just connect your, your bits, then you're usually pretty good. And some people uh, might want to go through and go, okay, well, if I cut all the way left and then kind of speed run to one area, um, I can tell you now a lot of the mechanics in Infinite Ages are not really for um, damage. They're going to be more related to utility and, and outthinking combat, essentially. This game is meant to be narrative, so I want life to feel very important. I want weapons to feel very dangerous. Um, I want you to feel very scarce as far as armor and hit points and things like that. Uh, just the general vibe of the game is to be, I'm not going to say realistic, because obviously superpowers, but it's going to be uh, life-threatening and, and kind of raise the stakes of, of what could potentially happen. Right. So since we're only... Uh, Level level one. We'll only look at these level one stuff and this level zero stuff. This mind manipulations. Uh, like I said, there's um, how many? This be three, six, nine, <laughs> twelve, or yeah, twelve, uh, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, so there's nineteen abilities total, um, which are going to potentially in future books we're looking to expand the tree to be able to branch out in four different directions so you might go down four different paths or three different paths um for right now 19 abilities they can do wildly uh impressive things as well as little things um just kind of depends on the level of the, of the ability as you would imagine each level is going to be a little better than the last uh for any gms that are like oh man my <laughs> all of my pe all of my players have superpowers. Um, it gets exciting when you start thinking about. I'm gonna uh, just just a little quick quick block here. It gets exciting whenever you think about all of the things, all of the powers that villains could start to have, and the rules that villains can break to have those powers, and the level that they're at uh, for the usage of those powers. Because if they're level 20, they all of a sudden have two actions or if they're level 30 or three actions and if they're level 30 then they have three actions and two reactions and it's, all of a sudden it becomes a very big uh, monumentous kind of boss fight if you are kind of uh, any of those players that are looking for that uh, interesting kind of like fun you know like a combat heavy uh, environment so we do have a little bit for everything everyone in this game um here we have influence which is our level zero ability so we can just pop that in. Influence. And these are meant to be more of notes. So I, I, I already know quite a bit about influence, but it's going to 
Activation cost is going to be one action, or it takes three seconds to activate it if you're out of combat. Um, duration is one minute per power you have in mind manipulation. So it's going to accrue more power over time. So for us, we're going to put duration, and we're going to grab the two level uh, ones that we can afford with our points. So we'll have three minutes. And then we can use it for a range, 120 feet. And then we can also, uh, uses that we have for this is once per day. So you can influence someone's mind by calming or angering them. Calming someone gives the, the target the status calm level one. Angering gives them anger level one. Uh, anger is a hindering stat. It will... Uh, kind of like blind rage, essentially. It, it makes a creature do uh, some wild things at some points uh, at higher levels. Uh, at low level, uh, it's not too too much of a debuff, but it is a debuff and a buffing um, type attribute, essentially. And then Calm is going to give, uh, I believe it gives a, a, an advantage to your rolls. I'm not going to say just advantage, but I think it gives an advantage to your rolls at level 1. Okay, so we can just put in, uh, I can calm or anger, right? Then we can just, okay, I'm going to calm this person down so that they make a great decision. I'm going to anger them so they make a bad decision, right? You can think of it that way. Okay, our next ones are going to be convulse. And this is instant duration, so it's instantly going to activate... Uh, its range is 50 feet, uses twice per day. I'm going to go ahead and not write this one all the way down. I'm just going to put in convulse um, and text to speech. Okay. If you guys can't see this part, uh, like the character sheet, it's kind of smaller text, which you can uh, change, but the, uh, but the, uh, on, like, the, on my screen, I have it shrunken down so that I could fit both things on the page. So whenever you're playing with it, it'll be a lot easier to see. And if you print it, it's pretty easy to read. Um, so convulse, we'll just go over this briefly. You can attempt to make a person uh, involuntary convulse. Uh, the target will make a 1d20 constitution roll against your 1d20 wisdom roll. If you fail, uh, if they fail, then they begin to convulse, which means which makes them fail an action they are attempting. So you can like force somebody to fail an action they're attempting to do. And this is going to cost you one reaction. So that happens on... That can ha Reactions can be used any time during anyone's turn. And you can essentially just make somebody fail an action. Um, which is very good. And you can use this twice per day. Range of 50 feet. Um, Text-to-speech. So this is uh, within sight, within 1,000. Uh, unlimited uses, you can cast it at will if you're out of combat, or one action if you're in combat. You can make a, per a target you can see, say, 10 words of your choice. Uh, this requires an opposed wisdom roll between you and the target. If you succeed, the target speaks the phrase of your choice. If you fail, the ability has no effect, and the target becomes aware that someone has tried to tamper with their mind. Um, it's a very uh, high-risk, high-reward type of um, ability, because if you, you know, uh, you know, trick the shopkeeper into saying that this, you know, dragon sword is only worth 50 credits or 50, you know, gold piece or whatever. Um, well, the, he's, he, you just said that. So then he's got to try to back himself out of it. And if you fail that, then he becomes very mad at you and calls the police and kicks you out of the store. Right. So that's like kind of just like a taste of like what the superpowers are. And of course, there's just. Um, 10 superpowers in the book, and they all have 19 abilities, uh, and they all have skill trees of their own. But we're going to sque squeeze on down to the uh, skill section real quick, just because I wanted to mention this so players, you can understand. Essentially, you're not waiting on the um, you're not waiting on the GM to tell you when to level up anymore. Uh, a lot of a lot of games do that. This one doesn't. So that's very cool. You can kind of keep track of your own progress. You can say, like, oh, hey, I'm getting really close to this specific one, so I can try to think of ways that my character are gonna, is going to do this thing um, to let me roll that. 
So to achieve higher levels in a skill, uh, players must accumulate a certain number of successes based on that skill level. Um, the skills tables right here, uh, we have level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. As I said before, so there's five uh, levels to each skill. And then they all have challenge ratings that are different. So CR is our challenge rating, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And then a number of successes. So as you can imagine, like level 1 is going to be relatively easy. You just have to roll above a 12 to start gaining successes. If you aren't trained in that skill, you can gain a level in that to level 1 as long as you're rolling over 12 and you've done it five times. So you have two like two two things to create to like generate a success. And essentially you're not asking the GM like, "Oh, is that technically a success or if something half works or half doesn't?" It's just based on the actual roll that you're doing. Um, and then level 2 is going to be relatively simple, right? You have to be level 1 already. So your CR ups to 14. So every success now requires a 14 and you got to get five more successes because these successes uh, are going to stack. So you'll do 5, then you'll do 10, then you'll do 20, then you'll do 30, and then when you're at 50, you're level 5, if that makes sense. Um, the more skill levels you have, the higher level your character becomes. As you can tell, like level 1 is going to be relatively easy for any skill, as long as you're actually trying. And um, down here, I'll show you guys the skill pages. So the skill pages, we made skill pages for each skill. So you have artist all the way through. Uh, to unarmed, which is all 24 skills, and uh, you can keep track of your successes here, your current level, and it'll also give you uh, specific attributes. So go ahead and zoom in here. Or actually, I'll just use this side. Uh, we can look at athlete. Athlete's an easy one to kind of comprehend and understand. I mean, athlete is probably one of the bigger ones that you're going to use quite often, so it does give you a pretty pretty decent jumps and like abilities. Uh, your climb speed is equal to your movement speed, so that's your level one. So you just get that. It, um, for the majority of things, your um, other than like creative ones, like artists, is going to be a little different. But for the majority of things, uh, skills are going to give you a new ability, something to something to in, improve you uh, directly. And it's not super powerful um, until you get a couple of them to level five, and then you're and then you'll start kind of like, oh, okay, this clicks. So because I have this and this, you can start kind of comboing skills in that fashion. And it becomes very unique as to different approaches that other players want to take, different uh, mythologies and things like that. Um, so you like double your jump height, double your sprint. Okay, cool. So now I'm moving around the, the battlefield very quickly. I'm doing, you know, I can make, uh, I can make, I can give my uh, teammates one, one additional initiative. And, oh, now I'm, you know, plus two harder to hit. Um, so that would add into our armor rating up here. So if we were level five in athlete, we would actually have a 14 armor rating without any armor on, without any, you know, just 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 walking around town type of thing. And there's 24 skills. They all have five levels. This kind of gives you the, this is going to tell you the attribute that it's related to. So if you have constitution and we're level five, we'd put in, We'd go over here, we'd put, all right, so we're level five, and then we have a bonus of one, so we'd have six. So anytime we'd roll for athlete, we'd add six if we're level five. So the modifier and the skill level go up in accordance. So essentially, just imagine there's a plus right here uh, in between, like in the word. So your constitution plus your level. And um, yeah, so that's skills in a nutshell. Go down a little bit further. Uh, this is the starting equipment stuff. So we have uh, medieval age, colonial age, modern, and space, as I mentioned before. These are just kind of general. Obviously, you can you can kind of tweak each age a little bit to modify what you need. And we have exacting like all of the general goods and general equipment for each age uh, listed uh, a little further below in like an equipment only section, which just goes through like here's all the things that you might use in a modern age. Here's all the things you might use in the space age. Here's all the things you know, so on and so forth. Um, this kind of talks a little bit about the economy. It's mostly talking to game masters here, uh, so we'll skip over that. Armor. So the way armor works in the uh, in the infinite ages is we have um, we have a type. So a variation, sorry, a variation of armor, and then the base, it's like a scale of armor. So you can get, you know, reinforced cloth, hardened leather, riot, ballistic, sheet, composite, plate, exo. 
of course you can name these whatever you need for your actual campaign for your actual time setting for your actual setting you know um but you can use these numbers anytime you want right and you can change these credit amounts if you're you know a gm so think about those things but essentially what this is going to do is you'd pick like we'll say riot ballistic okay so riot ballistic variation where we get a plus 10 to our armor points right out of the gate we have resistance to ballistic damage uh, and then we have a hindrance. And the way hindrances work is based off of when your armor breaks. So over on this side we have, uh, on our actual character sheet, we have our actual armor, its variation, its base. So we put in uh, uh, ballistic, ballistic armor, and we'll put in our base as, we'll just say it's a vest, just to make it simple. Our hindrance is gonna be stealth. Okay, and our resistance is ballistic, which makes this really this one really easy to use. Um, our armor rating increase. So if we go down here, we have a vest armor rating increase. We get a plus one for having uh, a vest of armor. Okay, and we get six armor points from the vest, and we get what do we get from this? We get ten armor points from having right ballistic. So we have sixteen AP. So then we can also go up here, underneath hit points, put 16, and our current 60. So if this were to ever hit zero, which it says, it'll, it'll describe this in further detail above as well, but if you ever run out of armor points, then you have to get your armor repaired. Uh, if you don't, you have to deal with the hindrance. So our hindrance amount is, is minus one here. So we can actually put that where our hindrance is, we put minus one. And hindrance only applies when your armor gets broken. So generally you're okay, but if your armor's broken, then you start taking a minus one because we wear a vest that's broken to our stealth. And then some of these are going to be called strikes or called shots or you know things like that. Um, then also you would add as a GM if you're looking at this too. Uh, if we chose, if they chose the right ballistic, that'd be 7,000, and then they want a vest, that's going to be 10,000 credits, because you add these together. So it's going to be 10,000 credits total. Uh, we also have layered armor, so we could we could also put in, uh, you know, a jacket, which is considered light, but if they have the little star there, that means it's layered, and you could put it in the layered section of the book. And of course, I'm sure you guys will come up with additional ways to do this and additional things uh, that can go in here, like whether it's enchant gear, or whatever you might do, or a very high-tech gear, stuff like that, cybernetics, things uh, that can all fit in here. Um, anyway, that's the uh, breakdown on armor for the most part. And weapons are done pretty similarly. So you'll have a variation, which is going to give you your damage type, your, dam your die size, um, weapon selection, so this tells you if you can use all weapons, or if it's only ranged, or if it's only melee, so on and so forth. And this is going to have a general cost as well. And then you'll modify that cost based on what kind of uh, weapon you choose. And the weapon's going to uh, basically just be the amount of dice that you can roll, but it's based on, you know, if you, so if we choose laser, that's a d4. Um, and we choose SMG, we get a plus three to our hit. So we put in here um, SMG, and its damage type is laser. We get a plus three to our hit, just off the bat. We don't have any dexterity, so we can't add anything. We don't have any, um, we don't have any gunning skills, so we're just plus three. Our damage, though, is going to be 2d4, and we would add dex if we had it. Okay, um, and then. Obviously, we can put a description if it's a specialty item or it has some extra additional ability. Uh, for right now, we're just going to put the 10,000 credits plus 400 credits, so it's 10-4. <laughs> uh, that just kind of funny to me. But, yeah, so now we know like the cost of it. We have all of our ins and outs. So if you're wearing any, uh, if you're wearing any reinforced cloth, then you have resistance to it, which means you take half the damage, generally. Um, again, uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then there's going to be uh, additional things you can put on those things. You can put like uh, attachments, like muzzles, to increase attachment on a gun, so we can you know give our gun a little bit higher hit. 
Uh, we can put scopes on it to give called shots a better chance of hitting, and so on and so forth. And there's 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 several different things that you can do here where we have like subpar through superb grips. So there's a bunch of grips that you can choose from. There's a bunch of uh, limiters and mags, which these are going to allow you to shoot more often, which is another thing about guns. Uh, shots before reloaded. Uh, for SMG, we can shoot twice, and then we have to reload. Reloading takes a reaction or an action. Um, so keep that in mind if you are using a rifle. And that kind of just is more or less to balance out the difference between using a weapon and using a melee, uh, just to make things a little bit more even. Um, cool. And then we've got, like, crystals, which are going to... They can do various effects and add cool effects to your weapons. These are mostly applicable to uh, lasers. And there's also uh, bullet types that will do kind of similar things. Then there's uh, cyberware and prosthetics, which we're not going to get too deep into here, but you can build gear, you can design things. Um, this is an example of how to design. It kind of shows you what you're doing as far as that, as far as like designing cybernetics works. This is a rundown on, you know, some vehicle ideas, some just basic things to think about whenever you're GMing and you want to know what size vehicle you have, whatever. Uh, this is also, for players here, this vehicle stable. Uh, it's going to tell you the speed of your vehicle, generally. Uh, things like that. This is also for creating mounts, uh, which this is more of a GM thing here. Uh, these are the general goods. This is where you'll get your information on... You know, uh, do, what, what do we need for communications? Okay, cool. So for communications at this time period, there were signal flares, message runners, and horns. Okay, that's pretty simple. Um, and this would be giving you information on mining goods, which is good for, uh, you guessed it, miners, uh, which are in the book as a profession. So you could be a miner. This is crafting gear, which this does come down to players sometimes. So you'll use this scale. Uh, I'm just going to brief over this stuff because we are pretty much done with character creation. Um, this is what a completed character looks like. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Obviously, you'd come up with a name. You would uh, finish the persona. Uh, you would make sure that you had all your skill points in. But essentially, very straightforward, very simple to put this stuff together. And I think we have like one, two, three. Yeah, we have four different um, different uh, skills that we've gained throughout the entire entirety of character creation. Um, and we also have our superpower that we picked and things like that. And if you go through the book, it'll give you a lot more information. But generally, uh, this is a completed character. And uh, well, I hope you guys have fun and enjoy the book, enjoy the game. Uh, if you're looking for players, you can always join the Discord. And in the you know, section below, I'll drop the Discord so that you can check it out. Thanks for watching. Okay, hello. Uh, this is uh, Donovan without a hat now. So, uh, welcome. You made it to the end of the video. Good job. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the content, and are excited to play Infinite Ages, um, feel free to head over to https uh, semicolon boop boop forward slash forward slash infiniteages.com. Um, if you haven't already, you can create an account there. You can pay using PayPal, stuff like that. Uh, we do. Um, we do have the character sheets and stuff like that, all the access to the stuff uh, in the link below, which is on the website. So just go to the website, get the page, play the game, have fun, um, and don't forget to join our Discord. Also, if you want to see what Infinite Ages content looks like, uh, we have a few um, videos. I'm not sure if it'll go there or there, uh, but we have a few videos that you can check out um, here or here on the video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn the little bell thing, whatever. I'm going to do some more content based around Infinite Ages and probably some more stuff uh, around like video games and stuff like that. So, heck yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one.